This is a project for the building acquisition for the Resurrection Center. It is a crazy radical idea by myself, David Ewan. This will be run by Kelvin Projects. The project name is Doors to Heaven. Most charities receive funding through donations from sponsors. Examples of fundraising activities are road races and bike rides called a runathon or a bikeathon. The donations are calculated by an anticipated distance traveled horizontally. Kelvin Projects will do the same except the travel will be vertical, straight up. The anticipated vertical travel is 17 miles into near space in the stratosphere. This is a space flight a thon to raise money needed for the purchase of a Christian Resource Center to be donated to the Resurrection Center of Springfield, Massachusetts. Kelvin Projects will donate the funds to UN Prime Company, a 501c3, to purchase a building in the city of Springfield, Massachusetts. This building will be sold to the Resurrection Center for one dollar. It is anticipated that the Resurrection Center will be a separate corporate entity at this time, instead of being a division of UN Prime Company as it is currently today. The Kelvin SL2061 Inspired by the $150 ICRIS project by Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 2009, a flight vehicle will be developed. The MIT project involved launching a sound balloon that carried a camera that took pictures of the curvature of the Earth and the blackness of space in the stratosphere. The flight vehicle being developed by Kelvin Project is called Kelvin SL2061-A. The letter suffix represents the flight. The SL represents sky launcher. The sponsorship will fund the assumed three to four hundred dollar project as well as provide proceeds going to the building acquisition for the Resurrection Center. This is the SL2061. It involves a healing a helium sounding balloon, a cut down mechanism, a rocket parachute, a radar reflector, and a payload capsule. FAA re regulations. In the United States there are two sets of regulations governing launching and tracking high altitude weather balloons. One is from the Federal Communication Commission FCC, and the other is from the Federal Aviation Administration FAA. Cell phones are not permitted to track high-altitude weather balloons in flight. Payloads cannot exceed a package weight size ratio of 3 ounces per square inch. No payload package can exceed 6 pounds in weight. Entire weight of all payloads cannot exceed 12 pounds in total weight. This excludes the weight of the balloon. No rope or cable should be used which requires more than 50 pounds of force to separate the payload packages from the balloon. The launch field has been selected. At 3,491 feet, Mount Greylock in Lanesboro is the highest point in Massachusetts. You can see it at 30 Rockwell Road in Lanesboro, Massachusetts. For location and telemetry, we will plan and predict the flight path. We will record launch and landing on the ground by Android GPS location. The tracking procedure has yet to be determined. We would like to have an onboard GPS tracking of altitude and also latitude and longitude to a website. We need to receive data from the GPS satellites and transmit on tracking. Most GPS tracking devices do not operate as high as the stratosphere or above 60,000 feet. GPS tracking tools may be supported by bionics. More research is required. The idea is to have GPS telemetry download via packet radio in APRS format. Something we're looking into seriously is the Spot Satellite Messenger Tracker. It stops transmitting at 60,000 feet and restarts at 15,000 feet during descent. The stratosphere is the second layer of the Earth's atmosphere. It is under the mesosphere and above the troposphere. The Kelvin SL2061 will travel to about the desired 90,000 feet, which is about 17 miles. 
The temperature is about minus 50 degrees Celsius or minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. This environment is enough to stop batteries from working. Environmental control to keep the capsule warm will be done by the use of active cold chemical heat packs, for example hand warmers or back warmers found at any major pharmacy store. Some examples of retail outlets are Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. To ensure payload power is maintained in this harsh environment, the Android device will have supplemental power via USB charger powered by lithium AA batteries. The payload capsule will be heated by active coal chemical heat packs. There will be an Android cell phone, a prepaid device. The camera will be using an app called Time Lapse Droid. The ground GPS locator will be used on the cell phone with one of two apps, either Where's My Droid or Locate My Droid. There will be a USB phone charger that uses lithium AA batteries. The in-flight GPS tracking will either be done with Bionics or Spot GPS Tracker. Prior to flight, the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, must be notified. The launch will be done early in the morning on a sunny day with little or no wind. Before launch, predict the landing. Send a recovery team to the assumed recovery site. Fill the balloon with helium after the launch decision is a go. Start the Android time-lapse camera and secure. Seal the payload capsule. And via cell phone communication, announce the launch to all support teams. And then finally, release the SL2061 for launch. The operation of the helium-filled sound balloon is as follows. Each cubic foot of helium can lift 28 grams. Free lift is defined as the amount of lift minus the weight of the payload or capsule. Each pound of free lift equates to 300 feet per minute ascent rate. For example, 61 cubic feet of helium lift payload of 800 grams would have 2 pounds of free lift. This makes the ascent rate at 600 feet per minute. At 90,000 feet, the barometric pressure is lower so a 5 foot diameter balloon, say it's 1,000 grams, would expand to about 20 feet to 25 feet and explode resulting in a descent and parachute deployment. The average ascent is 90 minutes and the descent is 30 minutes. Plan on a two to three hour flight with a launch early in the morning. Don't forget before launch to predict the flight path. GPS tracking in the air is done either through Bionics or Spot GPS Tracker. On the ground, at the start and the finish, there is Android ground tracking through cell phone apps. Advanced landing site is determined by prediction. The balloon bursts, the parachute deploys, and navigational telemetry tracking is done through GPS. The recovery team acquires payload and vehicle. It is proposed that the recovery team be managed by the Boy Scouts of America. This project has been worked on with technical resources. More research and design needs to be done.
you can see some thought in planning has gone through the SL2061. With this presentation, you see that Kelvin Projects is serious about accomplishing the technical aspects of the project so that the charitable donation of a building to the Resurrection Center can be achieved. Success of this project cannot be done by the volunteer elf efforts of Kelvin Projects alone. The volunteer participation and small financial donations will make this project possible. Charity sponsorship and donations to the nonprofit company U and Prime Company will enable the purchase of the building for the Resurrection Center. All donations are tax deductible. It is the element of people that will determine the success. Do you want to be part of the success story? This is our contact information. And this is a crazy radical idea by myself, David Ewan. The project name is Doors to Heaven.